Hey everybody, it's Yasmin here. Um, actually, just pop your head in, Louis. I'd just like to say my able assistant today is my beautiful uh, son, Louis. Uh, uh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> All okay. right, my husband's out and about buying us a, a fan because it's going to be like 30 degrees here in London and there are no swimming pools and no beaches. Oh my God. So how are you all doing today? The moon is in Leo. I'm going to do a card for everybody, but also I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, the importance of ritual today. Hello, everybody, hopping on. Susan, Andrea, Robin, Monique, Emily. I'm sorry, Monique, Louis now left the room. He had to stay in here for 10 minutes with me, poor child. How is everybody? Ah, hello, Meru, Merush, Merunisha, Merunisha. It's hard to say your name. People think my name's hard to say as well. Hello, Karen in Tassie. Hello, Kathy. I thought you were in Tassie, but I think you said you're not in Tassie. Hello, everybody. Okay, so let us talk about, I wanted to talk about, it's not particularly pertinent to the fact that the moon's in Leo today, TBH, but um, I've just done this course in India and there's so much amazing stuff which came out of it. So I thought, you know, for the, a few days, I might just talk a little tiny bit about stuff I learned and then I will do a card, okay? I just picked a card for my son. It was so accurate, it was great. All right, so I wanna show you something. Hopefully the light won't go out as I raise it up because the light's quite weak. So um, this is a beautiful lamp that I bought in India um, and it's called an arti lamp. Okay, so I've got this. I'm just going to show you a couple of things and I'm going to talk to you about ritual. Uh, I also bought this amazing thing. Hang on, what have I done with the... Here. I also bought this amazing looking lamp for like $6 or, you know, £4 at a supermarket in India. Because in India, it's so common to do rituals that they sell these sorts of things in the shops because uh, people use them every day at home. Now, what these are powered by ghee. I bought this at, on Amazon. I got two of them. There's ghee in there. Ghee is clarified butter. All right. And I've got, for example, this. I think it's called a Kalasham, something like that and uh, you put water in there. So what is the point of all these things? Here is the yantra I've been using for, I used for 11 days that got covered with cardamom seeds. What is the point of ritual? So, you know, in doing the thing, every day we would move this around in a circle and say Om Namo Narayani, which means I surrender to the Divine Mother, you know? And what is the point of this? So my teacher in India, Sri Shakti Narayaniyama was saying, are you doing this for the Divine? You know, does the Divine need you to do rituals? Like when you do your ritual every day, should you be doing it? Uh, should you be doing it for um, the divine or who are you doing it for? And, uh, you know, the answer is quite obvious. We are doing it for ourselves. We're not doing it for the divine. The divine is already divine. The divine doesn't need our rituals. Okay, so when we do our rituals, uh, we do the new moon ritual and the full moon ritual, for example. I do them every month here on online. I do them because... I figure I might as well share them as with as many people as possible. Are we doing them for God or goddess? Well, no, we're actually doing it for ourselves. Okay, now, what is the logic here? The logic is that when we do rituals, one of the things we do, for example, is we might do gratitude or we might do intention setting or we might do forgiveness. You know, they're kind of probably the three big... Um, uh, 
they're probably the three big themes that I do in my moon rituals anyway. And what my teacher said was, the thing is, remember, kids, you get back what you put out, okay? So if you're, you know, using a lamp and you're like doing a ritual or chanting or feeling devotion or feeling grateful for all the good things in your life or feeling optimistic about the future, what are you doing? You are creating good energy that you're putting out into the universe and what happens when you put good energy out in the universe? You get it back. So that is the thing with rituals. I've always thought of rituals as well as a way to express devotion, you know, because it's all very well being, you know, really grateful or, you know, really optimistic or whatever. And you can just, you can feel your feelings and that's great. But a ritual helps us to, um, to really uh, express how we feel, kind of to bring it down from a feeling into 3D, into something we can actually do, okay? So I'm gonna do a funny little Leo ritual, which just popped into my head. This is for everybody who's watching, okay? I'm gonna do a Leo ritual, and I'm not gonna do a Sanskrit chant, I'm gonna do an English chant. So are you ready for a one minute Leo ritual? And then we will do a card, are you ready? I want to spill my ghee everywhere. Here we go. You are awesome. You are fabulous. You are amazing. That's very Leo because Leo is all about being awesome, fabulous and amazing. So now we're going to turn it around and we're going to say, I am awesome, I am fabulous, I am amazing. Are you ready? Do it with me, silently or out loud. Awesome, fabulous, amazing. I am awesome, I am fabulous. I am amazing. There you go. I mean, that's kind of silly, I suppose. But why not? You know, if we're doing these, the divine, you know, what my teacher in India said all the time, the divine doesn't need anything. You know, you can, you know, we did this thing where every day we gave the divine um, some food and water so we could give like a banana or some chocolate or whatever and some water and... The te my teacher was like, does the divine need your bananas? <laughs> no, the divine created bananas. You know, in fact, we ate the offerings afterwards. Okay. Um, the divine doesn't need our devotion. The divine is devotion. The divine is love. The divine doesn't need us to do rituals. We do the rituals. Okay. So, you know, and today you can kind of do a sneaky ritual on someone when you're talking to them. You don't even have to tell them you're doing a ritual. But if you're talking to them on the phone or Zoom or whatever, and you can just say, oh, you know, you're really awesome. Like, just Leo, Leo them for the day because the moon's in Leo. I don't know. I'm just kind of making this stuff up as I go. But do you know what I mean? Like, ritual is amazing and let's do more rituals. That's all. That's Maybe that's the bottom line of what I'm saying today. All right. Who would like a card? Who would like a card? Because here is a card. Yes, and all the Leos, you're awesome. And guess what? Everybody has Leo in their chart somewhere. That's just how it works. Shall I tell you where you have Leo in your chart? Okay, if you're Aries or Aries rising, Leo rules your fifth house, which makes, which makes you someone who's really fun to be around. It's also about kids and creativity, so you're probably quite creative. If you're Taurus or Taurus rising, Leo rules your fourth house, which means at home you are probably, you have like your home is your castle or you're treated like a king or a queen at home. If you're Gemini or Gemini rising, Leo rules your third house, which is why Geminis are so good at communicating because Leo does everything with flair. If you're Cancerian or a moon child or a moon child rising, Leo rules your second house, which means in theory you should be very generous and don't mind spending up big on the, 
on the fabulous things in life. If you're Leo or Leo rising, well obviously Leo rules your whole life. If you're Virgo or Virgo rising, Leo rules your 12th house. Now, if you don't believe in astrology, just listen to this. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. What are Leos famous for? They're famous for being chaste and modest. The 12th house is where we put the stuff we don't want to see. So they put their fabulousness in their 12th house because they don't want to show off. Yay, Virgos. I've actually written a book about all this as well. I'm, I'm actually, it's called Written in the Stars and uh, I'm, I'm actually, it's a self-published book um, because I wrote it years ago and uh, I'm going to just sell it online. You'll get all this information. Um, if you're liberal or liberalizing, then Leo rules your 11th house, which means you have fabulous friends, okay? And you love your friends to adore you. If you are Scorpio or Scorpio rising, then guess what? Leo rules your 10th house of career. So you can be fabulous at work. If you are Sagittarius or Sagittarius rising, then Leo rules your ninth house, which is all about travel, um, adventure, and teaching and studying. And basically, it's your actually your kind of your home zone. So you are just naturally fabulous in so many ways, Sagittarius. If you're Capricorn or Capricorn rising, it rules your eighth house of sex and money. So you're fabulous at sex and you're fabulous with money. If you're Aquarius or Aquarius rising, it rules your seventh house. So you are fabulous when it comes to relationships and you like a fabulous lover. And if you're Pisces or Pisces rising, then it rules your sixth house, which means you have the ability to be awesome and fabulous and amazing every single day of your life. But you knew that, didn't you, Pisces and Pisces rising people? Okay, so here's a card. I have the card ready. I hope you all have a question. Floriana says the moon is not in cancer. Well, I looked at my uh, program seconds before I arrived. I came on air and I think it's already moved into Leo. So there you go. We just had the new moon in cancer. It will have moved on into Leo by now. Oh, one of my favorite cards. Everybody, whatever you're doing, do it well. Take a leap of faith. Take a risk and put your heart's true desire into action. Take a leap of faith. Yay! So there you go. Take a leap of faith, guys. Take a leap of faith. I hope you're all really well. Remember, we're in the waxing cycle. We are moving towards the full moon eclipse, which is going to take place on July 5. Okay, I'm going to do a ritual for the full moon. I will get the page up in the next couple of days so you can sign up for it. It's going to be, again, it's going to be like the new moon one I did. Um, it's going to be free for anybody who buys my diary 2020, my Moonology Diary 2021. Anybody who buys it, it's going to be free for you. And if you've already bought the diary and you came to the new moon ceremony, which people have absolutely raved about, and I thank you, thank you, thank you for that, then you still, of course, you get access to the full moon one as well. We will email you all the details. Someone's here. What's this? Uh... Yes, Chloe's saying the moon changes every two and a half days. Yes, in fact, in astrology, we use a very technical term. We say the moon changes signs every two and a bit days. It's very technical. It's not exactly the same every time. Henna says you have very bubbling energy today. Yes, I do, actually. I do. Have a beautiful day, everybody. I will go and bubble downstairs. I have lots of stuff to do. And remember, if you're in Australia, you can now get my weekly horoscopes in Woman's Day, TV Week, and Take Five. Yay! And also, I said that in Woman's Day you could get the Cosmic Column. Actually, I think the Cosmic Column will be in there from next week. It wasn't in there this week. It'll be in next week. Have a beautiful day. Nikki says she's taking a leap of faith. Go on, take a leap of faith. There's a reason why you're watching this, guys. Sending you, oh, I'm gonna do the full moon thing now. The new moon planner right now. Thank you for reminding me. I'm not gonna move from this spot. I'm gonna do it now. Lots of love, guys.